Welcome to Playing With Fire, the podcast for people who are ready to custom build their love. We're talking about non-monogamy, however you design it, as an individuation opportunity. Want to leave the default and make your life spectacularly you? You're in the right place. So let's talk about a question I get asked pretty regularly these days. Um, so here's the scenario. And this was presented to me by two different listeners. And then two podcast hosts asked me about this question. Okay. And it is too complex to answer in a, in a five minute answer. So it deserves its own podcast. Here's the scenario. Um, I want to open up either. I want to open up my whole relationship in all sorts of domains, all sorts of ways, or maybe I just want to open up in one particular way. Maybe I want to open up sexually, um, in something that looks like maybe a swinging relationship where we only play together, but we do open up expansively in our sexuality. How do I bring this up? And then, and then if I bring it up and it goes poorly, if it lands badly, what do I do? And <laughs> what do you, I guess, <laughs> it's, so it's a great what do you question. do when things go badly normally? <laughs> that, okay. So, right. The beginning of this question is really about establishing a baseline of what's normal in your relationship. Mm -hmm. What's, um, what skills do you currently have? Um, this to me is a great place to, if you are before, if you're in the if you're in the before times, if you have not brought this conversation up yet and you're just pondering it, well, Len, let's take a look at your relationship. Currently, what happens if you have a rupture, if there is a, a break in the emotional connection between the two of you, what happens if that if you have that break? What are your skills? What do you do? What's the next step? Um, for many of us, the next step is silence. We just try to wait until it goes away. I'm um, there. I mean, that's not, it doesn't tend to be my mode. Um, even, even before I had a lot of relationship skills, I tended to be a rush in and try to fix with more words. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily useful words, but just more words. You've tended to be a... I've tended to be more avoidant, like, okay, a problem happened. Maybe if I just kind of wait for time to resolve it and then like the heat of the situation will reduce and then maybe we'll talk about it or maybe it'll just go away. Used to be how I went, went at things. and uh, I'm calling him out, people. Not, about, you did not think maybe we'll talk about it. Uh-uh. All right. <laughs> and I have a great example. Here, Here's how I'm calling you out. We had at least no fewer than a dozen major life changes all happen in the span of a few years. And every single time we went through the, the rupture, your go-to move was to, you experienced the rupture. We, we would have our emotional connection broken and you would, you would go into your, your hiding mode. And not, not one of those times did you ever hope that we were going to get back around to talking about it okay yeah that's accurate it is it is a little tricky to um to put myself back there right. from here where i've learned so much about how to actually have a relationship with somebody well how but to... that's a good point um the yep. thing is i think that that is i think it it's not just that it's so typical the way that you did that so it it worked for you in so you had a previous relationship where that worked it achieved my goals which were and it achieved the homeostatic level that you that, had set mm -hmm. with that person the two of you had an implicit agreement made very early on even maybe a little bit of explicit conversation about let's maintain a calm overall demeanor to the relationship yeah yeah and so if there's rupture, but the goal is calm, well, then you don't revisit the situation. You just stay with, like, you just wait and you hope for time to bring you back to the calm. Yep. At least that's how I experienced it. That's how, when I showed up into that relationship, that's how I experienced and both of you. And this is, this is a way we don't have to get too deep into it, but the thing is the waiting is the calm. I'm not waiting for the calm. It's already here. 
Right. So that's how you mission accomplished. It. That was how I experienced it. And so I experienced that as <laughs> you did not, not yeah, that, that did not feel like calm to me, um, because it was missing one of the key rupture repair ingredients, mm-hmm. right? Which is acknowledgement that a rupture has happened. Mm-hmm. And for me, the, you know, we could we could get all into the the. <laughs> the nuts and bolts of all the many ways that there are to repair in relationship. But at core, if, if I can't, if we can't acknowledge that there is a rift, Mm -hmm. that there is this break in our connection, for me, that wakes up my feelings of invisibility and abandonment. And so now the, the rift, the gap grows for you talking about the thing appeared to make the rift grow so we were at odds in our repair move that was really that was was really hard yeah that that took years to so come to some alignment one of the key things that we shifted was being able to name when there is Mm -hmm. a rupture so let's shift back to that original question and and the way it was posed to me is so let's say i've I have, I bring up this idea, like, let's be polysexual or let's be, um, let's swing or let's, let's open up and and go to play parties or let's go to a BDSM dungeon and, and play there. What, whatever it is, let's say I've opened up this conversation. If I didn't take stock ahead of time of like, well, what will I do if it lands badly? Yeah. Right. Okay. So if that's where you are, then let's just at first say, you got to name that you got a name that, 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 that this big new idea got brought up, um, and may have come out of left field for your partner. One of the ways that I see people struggle when they're thinking about opening up in any realm is they'll often be thinking about this opening or exploratory expansivity for weeks, months, years, even decades. When yeah, and that's so for a tricky them, thing. Yeah, like this is all happening. Like it, they have all this. There's all of this wondering and 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 imagining happening. So their partner the, might have none of that going on. Right. So there's the the rupture repair um, process, whatever you've got. But if you're spending all this time thinking and pondering inside without communicating, you're going to be in a completely different mental and emotional state around whatever this conversation is going to be and even than in your, your partner and even an embodied somatic a state somatic right like state. Oh, so totally. let's take the nervous system that. into account mm-hmm. right so the context of of my nervous system how regulated am i when i when this conversation comes up will matter so It'll matter and this is i think what people are experiencing often when this conversation comes up and it doesn't go well is somebody doesn't feel safe. Right. Because if it's just like, well, that's a stupid idea. It's a completely different conversation. Right. Then, so, oh no, what does this mean? That's a different okay. situation. So let's break that down. So let's say contextually, I I come to you and I I've been thinking about let's start going to play parties. Let's get involved in the swinging lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And I've been thinking about this for months and I finally bring it to you. And let's say I bring it to you and we happen to be driving home from a really stressful family event. Mm -hmm. We just both like, we weathered that storm. We got through it together, but we're both really stressed. Now we both have to go back to work in the morning. And I just throw this idea out. And to you, because you've already been thinking about it, it could feel generative. Like, oh, this is a restorative conversation that will get us closer together. But me, in my stress, being with my family and feeling like a crappy little brother, I'm going to be feeling insecure and thinking, oh, why do you want somebody else? What's wrong with me? And all right, those are, I mean. Just say that again. What questions might come up for you? If I if I pose this, what are the questions that might yeah, come What's up? wrong with me? Why aren't I enough? Is there something, Yeah. you know, are you looking for something that you haven't been able to get from me or you don't even want from me? And the insecurity right. can really so, bubble around. So it can instantly put me, put you into a defensive position. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So first off, we have the, the actual physical context. What what, mm-hmm. when, and where are we bringing this 
topic up. So think about this. Often we don't make a plan, but I, I like to go back to the basics. Don't. This is a joke. I'm going to say it. It's a joke. Don't do this. We need to talk. Okay. <laughs> That's a tricky one. Okay. <laughs> but okay. But we can. But the when and the where and the. Yeah. Set yourself up. Halt. Or. So one of a really clean, clear, easy way to just make sure it's a good time to have a conversation is, are either of us hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? If we don't have those needs currently met, this conversation is not well-placed. Okay. So imagining that we have addressed the hungry, angry, lonely, and tired, HALT is the acronym to remember for that. Imagining that we're in a good spot. We've got snacks. We've had a nap. <laughs> um, and it's a good time to talk about this because we are also in a place where we have some level of privacy and we are not right up against a deadline where we have to change context and right. be like in another mindset. Like I wouldn't want to have a new topic brought up to me right before I need to go teach. Right. So it's not, it's not a conversation under pressure. There's some, yeah. some relaxation to it. Right. Mm -hmm. So so there is no perfect scenario, but there's what I'm thinking about now is there are better, there are, there are more ideal scenarios. Now there's the embodied state. So there's that, that's the outer context, but the inner context. So if, yeah. if I've been thinking about this for a long time and I've been thinking this would be awesome, like maybe we have a desire discrepancy or I like particular stuff that you don't like in bed and I think like, this is actually a huge problem solver. Like, hey, I know that there are people out there doing sex differently and it's working for them. And wow, this would actually address some of the ways that you and I don't really meet each other's needs already. And that, and we've been struggling with this for years. Cool, awesome. You know what, this will be great. I'll bring this. If you haven't been in an internal state of thinking about it, then even if I come with really positive generative attitude and I'm ready to support you, I may still shock your system. That's it. The, the shock, right? That That's right. And so I might not mean to be shocking your yep. system, but here, here's what your nervous system is doing. It is scanning all the time, trying to answer one question. Am I safe? With that posing the idea of um, polysexuality or opening your relationship in in some bold new way absolutely could trigger that saber tooth tiger level reactivity, right? It could send you into a total threat state, especially if you have no reason to think that this is coming. Right. If you've been, you know, in a in a monogamous relationship, there haven't been a lot of conversations about anything else. Right. And all of a sudden, here comes this. So. Bucket okay. of ice water, yeah. saber tooth tiger. Okay, mm -hmm. it sends you into a dysregulated state. If I have brought up a topic and I notice that you're going into a dysregulated state, well, one of the things that I can count on is I've known you for a while. And so I notice when you're dysregulated mm -hmm. and I can choose to be like, oh, oh, Ken's, Ken's dysregulated right now. So like one of the clues that I get from you is you stop making eye contact with me. Um, another clue that I get from you is that your jaw, your, your jaw and your embouchure change well, the, yeah, the you, shape of my lips, the shape uh, of how you hold your mouth changes. Um, and so I know you're stressed and from there I can choose to do a few things. Um, we have some co-regulation practices that even if I wouldn't consider us being in full rupture, I can just be, I can close that gap. But I don't want to rush in too fast because if you're in a dysregulated state and now I've brought up, I've splashed you with that bucket of ice water, you might not want me to run in and press myself against you. So this is where, again, knowing what works and having repair tools yeah. and having co-regulation skills. And having experience is, with each other's dysregulation. Right. So huge benefit. So here's mm -hmm. the thing. If you don't have these skills of co-regulation and rupture and repair well, one option is to build those skills right now. Build them now, because here's the thing. If you're opening, you're going to want those skills in place. And in fact, if you come to work with me, if you join me in the year of opening or you come to work with me privately, 
I'm going to teach you those skills. I, we're going to go through neurosomatic intelligence skills. We're going to go through, okay, what are, what are the ways that your body finds safety again? What are the things that are supportive for you to get yourself back into your window of tolerance? See, I might as well get those pieces in place. Yeah, so there are tools and processes. But you might not have them right now. You might not have them, and they're different for everybody, different for every set of There are people. lots of options, but the there thing is actually, I, I mean, they're they're different for everybody like they can be, but you also don't have to reinvent anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess I was just, thinking more of, yeah. Just learn some. They can so, choose the ones that work. Right. But there's already a host of them. So if you, and if you are struggling and looking to learn, um, neurosomatic intelligence as a tool, um, Ken and I are going to be holding a masterclass in, um, in sometime in the middle of 2023, but, But, um, for right now, I do have some resources I can point you to. We'll put a couple of links in the show notes here because neurosomatic intelligence is one efficient way to learn how to regulate your nervous system. It's not the only way, but it is one way. Um, So let's say that I know that we have some repair skills because we've gone through rupture before. We've had hard conversations. We've been able to do things like name that, that something has happened. We've been able to apologize using really thoughtful methods of like, not just, eh, I'm sorry, but like I've named that it's happened. I, I've owned the fact that that I had a role in this. I instigated this conversation or this rupture. Describe what I see its effect on you has been. Yeah, exactly. So there's a whole there's a whole thing that we can go through to come back to a place where, okay, now <laughs> from here, can we have a conversation about how that conversation went? Can I help you by supporting you in processing the discomfort of that conversation? The opening process is I, I, the, the image that I use for it always, it's a spiral. You're going to go through this, this beautiful process of visiting and revisiting iteratively core wounds, um, embodied safety issues, patterns of relating, and you're going to come at them over and over again as you open, as you explore your relational um, expansivity. And the beautiful thing, the reason I say it's beautiful is because it's a spiral. It's not just a circle. You don't just loop around in the same spot the whole time. Every time. Moved a little bit. We come back to these things and we are new. We are different. But if we, if we imagine that it's just going to be a straight line from, well, I think opening up would, would be great. I think it would serve my needs. I think it would be awesome. Let's just do it. If I can't make space for you to have your own process now, if I've been thinking about this for weeks, months, or years. Yeah. Yeah then you may need some time simply to mm-hmm. get on board with even the, the barest idea. And first, I might have to deal with the reality that, that that threat state triggered a whole bunch of insecurity. If a whole bunch of insecurity has been triggered, I want to just like name the fact that that was going to get triggered anyways. It was going to come up. Like if that insecurity is just sitting there waiting to be awakened, then there was no perfect conversation you could have. There might be better or worse, but there's no perfect conversation. So I want you to relax your grip on the idea that there was some perfect way that you could do this and say, okay, well, we're having the conversation now. How can I get the support that we need to do this with some grace and that, and that, some time and patience for each other to be in a process. Yeah. That's why my program is called the year of opening. Yeah, it right. takes time. Time's an ingredient. And um, a, a couple things come to mind about, so yeah, there's no perfect time. I mean, it, whatever. Waiting forever. Doesn't waiting work, forever. But, but the thing is, either. waiting forever 
was kind of counterproductive. You need to find a good, you know, you halt, you set up a, as, as good a container for the conversation as you can. But the longer you wait, the further apart you're likely to be when you have the conversation. Right. And this is a conversation that you want to have as as with as clear communication as possible. Right. So I find that many people, they do, they wait longer than they're comfortable having waited. So then there's this built up sense of like, well, now I need this. This has now crossed mm -hmm. out of the realm of, oh, curiosity and out of even just want into, it feels like a need. Um, and when I say a need, I mean, a need to act. You may experience your non-monogamy as an orientation. You may, like, this may be your identity. That's fine. I'm not denying that. But your actions, the ways that you change your established relationships, when they shift from, oh, I have this curiosity to, oh, I have this want to explore. When they shift into this level of like, I need this and I need it now, it becomes more challenging for me to meet you where you are and be like, in the patient curiosity of like, well, how are we going to do this? What, what are some of the ways people explore this? Let's, let's try this. Let's find out. Um, so yeah, I don't, waiting forever frequently backfires. Yeah. Rushing really, really fast headlong without getting any vocabulary, without setting up a nice container for the conversation, also challenging. And I think that when this conversation comes up, there are also a lot of assumptions made. And those assumptions usually expose some of the implicit stuff that's already going on in our established oh, yeah, relationship, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll use myself as an example, because I think my example is, well, not that uncommon, although perhaps gender swapped from what people would expect. Um, when I was married, so I was married to the same person for 13 years. We'd been together for 17 years when um, I went from just having crushes and falling in love with people, but not acting on it to, oh, I have fallen for somebody that I'm like, I, I want to take an action. And now, yeah, let's, let's do this. I want to have this conversation because there's somebody I want to have sex with. One of the reasons I brought this conversation to my husband at the time uh, so blithely, I literally just jumped into the shower with him and told him like, oh my God, this is so funny. I can't believe this. I am so hot for this guy. Just did not land really well with my partner. And from here, like, don't worry, I see it. This was not well mm -hmm. thought. It's an example of rushing in. Yeah. It was also two o'clock in the morning. Oh. We'd just come home from dancing and- Tired, was... probably hungry. Yep. Yeah. I was- it was all the things. We yeah. hadn't had 2 a.m. bacon, which we should have. I'm vegetarian now, but hungry the bacon leads right to angry. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I see from here why it doesn't make any sense. And yet, here's why I thought it would be okay. Um, I had always been a much higher, higher drive person. Um, I had always wanted more sex in that relationship. I have no idea what his sex drive or sex interest is outside of my relationship to him. And it's none of my business, but um, we had always had a desire discrepancy, a very significant desire discrepancy. We got together when I was 16 and our desire discrepancy showed up by the time I was 17. Okay, we had always so been way out of sync. So I thought my better. showing interest in having sex with someone else, I genuinely thought he might feel unburdened. Like, oh, thank God, because it was a constant problem. I He, he didn't want to have sex. So I was like, okay, cool. You're not playing with this toy. Somebody else wants to, maybe this will be okay. And Turns out there's a little more going on than just that. So much more. I did yeah. not give him enough credit for how that would um, impact him emotionally because he seemed like such a stable, steady, solid person. I thought, I couldn't imagine how there would be any insecurity in there. And yet there was. What I found out was, yeah, he instantly went into all sorts of storylines around like, wait a minute, why am I not enough? And why would you need to get that from anyone else? And what, oh. <laughs> um, so, and that was rough because 
I already had a person in mind, yeah, which it was uh, really rough because now I felt an urgency situation and I right? make the space for him to explore his feelings around this without there being now a specific objective perceived interrupter. So now we've got jealousy going to like real objective, rational jealousy. I literally told him, Hey, there's this person I would like to interrupt our connection. Um, right. This all makes sense to me now, but from the place I was standing that night when I jumped in the shower, it was, I thought it would be a fun, sexy conversation because we had always played in the fantasy and imagination of having sex with other people. We'd always talked that way. So I thought it would be fine. And then I made it real. And in the moment that I made it real, I dysregulated his nervous system and I didn't have any tools that I knew of to help. He didn't have any tools and we were both really tired and hungry and lonely and angry. And, and then yeah. it just kept spiraling. And we needed to get up the next morning and run our business together and raise our children. And there was a lot to put back in place. And that was really, really hard. And we did not immediately reach out for help. Mm -hmm. So then we compounded the issue. If I could go back and tell that girl one thing, I would say, hey, acknowledge right now that you shocked him. Mm -hmm. I see. Take ownership of the fact that even though you thought he saw this coming, it seemed obvious. It clearly was not. It was shocking. It was shocking to his system. Try to take the emotionality out of it and say it was a shock to his system. Okay. And now slow your roll because just because I felt urgency doesn't mean it was urgent. So, yeah, um, to avoid the shock or minimize it anyway. Um, what are some things you could have done? Okay, the first one, the easiest for for me and my in my case was I absolutely could have floated a test balloon. Oh, sure. Right. So if I had approached this with a, hey, you know, um, you know that that storyline in that movie, like where there was oh, that yeah. throuple, mm -hmm. like that was yeah. so like that was so interesting. Yeah. And then waited to see what conversation unfolded. Or in the scenario we were in, we had recently found out that several of our friends were involved in swinging. We, we hadn't known about it, but we found out that they were. I could have just said like, oh, hey, so, hey, what do you think about this? And allowed what we were witnessing out in the world to become a meta conversation yeah. about how that might feel. So they let the idea come in from elsewhere. And let it which be theoretical. Which lets it be theoretical and less shocking. And not okay. bring up the insecurity instantly, and, yeah. right? Not introduce a perceived interrupter and not introduce it, that question of why am I not enough? I did not do that. And this is one of the reasons I am so passionate about my work, because even though I didn't do that, I still think there was time. There was a there was a, a there was a window of time where we might have sought out resources and vocabulary and patience. And I did not have the patience because from my perspective, I had been putting my sex life on hold for over a decade. And I was in my early thirties and I was tired of it. This felt like an emergency to right. me. And so your patience was, was, was used up. It was used up. Because I you, it had, and he didn't even know. And even if so, he didn't, I mean, now that's not to say I had asked him, I had brought up sex pretty much every day, the whole time. So I don't mean he didn't know, like I'd never mentioned I wanted sex. God's sakes. That was definitely, that, anybody that who not, knew me then would you, you do that. testify. <laughs> you do I do that. and I did. Yep. <laughs> um, but I had never said, hey, this is serious enough that I'm, I'm going to need us to collaborate on finding a solution. So I'm going to go find us a sex positive therapist. I'm going to go find us. And, and this was also a longer time ago. I mean, we're talking this, this would have been me going back to the early 2000s. So the books that I would turn to now didn't exist. Didn't exist then. Um, yeah. But I would have turned to those resources. If it were happening now, I would say, yeah, let's get resources. Like, why would we not resource ourselves? So then, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
there are people like me out here who I've spent the last 13 years plus dedicated to learning these specific skills and even longer going back into that marriage, trying to learn the skills of how, how do we relate? Because I didn't ever mean to cause those ruptures, mm -hmm. but I did. Most of the people who ask me this question of like, well, uh, how, what's the, what do I do if they feel insecure or if this conversation goes badly? Or how do I even start this conversation without screwing everything up? Well, doing that well requires forethought. Yeah. We actually have a great tool though. We like we we actually already took care of this too. Um, so all the steps that we just talked about, they're important. So I want to know that you have rupture and repair skills. Um, I want you to plan for the outer context to be solid and and as secure as you can make it. I want you to plan to have nervous system regulation skills and co-regulation skills and be prepared to be patient with your partner. And it can still be really hard. Yeah. I almost said wicked hard. I would have showed off all my Massachusetts. <laughs> um, it can still be really, really yeah. hard to say the words and to say them in a way that you actually mean for them to come out. Um, so Ken and I actually recorded a conversation together specifically to oh, yeah. address this. Yes, we did. You can grab it. We'll put the link in the show notes, but you can also go to um, joliehamilton.com forward slash easy. Um, it's a conversation that we recorded for you to listen to yourself and then to ask your partner to listen to. And we're explaining like what it is, how complicated it is to actually have a nuanced conversation about what might be possible beyond the limits of monogamy yep. without forcing anyone else's idea of what that has to look like onto you. So we already made this conversation. It exists. It's called the easy conversation. So joliehamilton.com forward slash easy. You can download it for free, use it. Um, this doesn't have to be as disruptive as I found it. That was the beginning of the end of my marriage. In fact, I we broke up 45 days after that day I jumped in the shower. And as many times as I have told that story, I have never stopped regretting, not the breakup, because I think we actually, we really truly are so much better apart as co-parents and just, we are, but I regret having shocked his system. Mm -hmm. And I deeply regret not giving myself the patience to say, hey, you're going to need, need a whole skill set to do this open relating thing. So you get to get those skills, even if you can't necessarily do the open relating now, you get to up-level your relationship skills right now. There's no need to wait. I could have been doing all of that work. Right. I could have been exploring all of that for myself and it would have benefited me, even if the best option for my first husband and I was still conscious of uncoupling, we could have then done that consciously instead of with this massive rupture that then became animosity for a period of a few years. Because this is, I we, we've been talking about tools and the, the things you can do to set up to have the conversation and the, the conversation about the conversation that we offer people. And, um, you know, that goes up to the point that we don't know what your relationship is, but the more collaborative you can make that conversation and that's the thing we can't tell you. Like, what's what's collaboration look like for you? What do you need for collaboration? We can tell you the things that everybody needs, like, you know, nervous system regulation. Right. Um, but uh, do the things and learn the things from each other that will make it as collaborative as possible to have conversations about right. well, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you approach relationships very differently. Your other relationships have all looked very different from the one you have with me because my need for words and to talk through the theoretical and the philosophical about everything is it's, so high it, and it, that it, you do different things with me than you do with other people and it, it built up it, it's it's an inherent collaboration because you you do all these things with words and and i respond so now we're working together it's two-way street and and it's not necessarily all about words so if you're not words people yep. What are your ways of collaborating? I think you, that's a brilliant point. Mm -hmm. um, I I would encourage everybody who's considering this to not jump to conclusions about, oh, you know, 
women are going to feel that way or men are going to feel that way or and also yeah, gender, gender is not a binary so you know beyond all of that the if if you jump to a conclusion about what your partner is going to react to without without taking seriously the fact that they get to grow and change too but you might need to give them space patience and a lot of support to get there um you're you're cutting off your nose despite your face because what I wish I had from that time, I wish I could look back and say, I showed up as my best self. I supported mm -hmm. myself and my partner as we explored this new thing. And even though it didn't work out, I know that we did the best we could given the fact that we wanted different things from relating. And I don't have that. So I am here to help anyone who wants that um, gentler and more conscious path into whatever's next whatever iteration of relating is next for you there's no one right way to design your relationship and lots of people actually about 25 percent according to a recent national survey are interested in some type of open relationship but how do you know if you are ready to open up happily not everyone is and that's no problem I've got a 60 second quiz that will give you the answer. And even better, you'll walk away with your next step, whether you're good to go or not so much when it comes to opening up. And this is no Buzzfeed nonsense. I personally designed this quiz from my years of academic research. Go to joliquiz.com. That's J-O-L-I-Q-U-I-Z.com and find out if you're ready to open up happily and what to do if you are or if you're not.